It's Wednesday, December 3rd at PowerGen International and Nuclear Power International. Over the last 24 hours, we've had the keynote session, we've had conference sessions, we've had an opening reception. Let's take a look at what's been going on at PowerGen in the last 24 hours. Welcome to PowerGen International and Nuclear Power International. Interestingly enough, this week is PowerGen week in Orlando. Uh, the mayor has uh, recognized the 20th anniversary of PowerGen and has declared this to be PowerGen Day. And everybody asks, you know, what can I do? How can I help? www.change.gov by clicking on energy and environment. And right now, 5,000 people, 5,000 people can email that we're in, for, in favor of nuclear being part of the green energy mix going forward. And I can tell you, you receive 5,000 emails from people from all over the world within five or 10 minutes, I assure you, politicians pay attention. We have huge challenges ahead, but we have opportunities. And I propose to you today to contribute to an energy new deal. All of us here, we can make huge investment, major investment in clean air energy. This energy new deal can help a lot in reducing carbon emission. And lastly, Mr. President-elect, this energy new deal will help us with energy security and will reduce the addiction to imported oil. I want to leave you specifically with four main messages. The first is that the science says we can't wait. We have to get started on addressing this challenge today. And the second is that if we move quickly, if we put in place the right rules and allow industry to start responding in a, in a rational, market-based way, it doesn't have to hurt. Third. I want to give you a sense that companies that get out in front of these trends stand to profit and they stand to reduce their risks. Lastly, I want to give you a little bit of a sense of how NRDC is involved in hammering out the details of climate legislation in order to make sure that we get this right and move forward at the least possible cost to the economy. I'm sure you've heard that often quoted Chinese line, may you live in interesting times. These days, most of us are thinking, how about a little less interesting? If banking is the plumbing of our economic system, the energy sector is its wiring. That wiring has been assembled piecemeal over the course of a century. The demands imposed upon that wiring have continuously grown greater. How we make it work has grown vastly more complex. We have seen problems in the past. We have fixed some, ignored others, at times, we have lacked the political will to act. And if we look to the key thing that I do agree with you, if the price is right, and that's what you said, um, the last thing the U.S. economy needs is electricity to increase. I mean, I, I can't imagine why we would put a, such an onerous burden of taxes via electricity, cap and trade, etc., that will at least double the price of electricity. So, you know, we need to take a little bit at a time, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and not deceive people, I believe, on, on the power of wind. Very nice. Quick rejoinder on that. Last one, and then... Uh, it's been a long sure? time since I had a rejoinder. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Apologies, but uh, I, I do think that we will see, uh, under a cap-and-trade system, upward pressure on uh, energy prices initially. But let's keep in mind that a, a number of important things will happen. First off, even at the EPA's own projections, we're looking at more like a 25% bump in electricity prices, maybe as much as 50% in the initial decade or so, even in coal on the margin regions. So it's, I don't think it's a doubling at the retail level. Uh, and, and maybe at the wholesale level, um, in, in some of the more pessimistic scenarios. One more rejoinder. <laughs> I turn to your son and say, hope is not a plan. We hope this and we hope that. Thank you. CARE was promulgated under the Good Neighbor provision of the, good, of the Clean Air Act. And the, the Good Neighbor provision says that a state's regulations have to be sufficient to prevent 
air emissions from within that state from impacting air quality in another state. If you have an endangerment finding for NSPS, it'll translate to the others. And the one that we are most fearful of is a national ambient air quality standard for carbon dioxide, which most people think couldn't happen. But when you look at the way EPA builds the logic on that, you say, well, yes, it can. And when that happens, you then are going to be regulating the entire economy. Those are the news headlines from today, Wednesday, December 3rd at PowerGen International and Nuclear Power International. For more news of the show, pick up a copy of the show daily. Have fun at PowerGen International and we'll be back tomorrow.